been a while since I've done an update on this 3D printed Polish Enigma machine. If you have seen my other videos, you'll see I've been quite busy on the car lately, so that's taken up most of my time. But as it's the middle of winter, sometimes it gets a little bit cold to be out there messing around with car stuff. And all the different little bits and pieces I was waiting for to be able to keep working on this machine have finally arrived. So now I've started trying to progress this again. I think the last film I made was about the printed circuit board for the, the lamp board there. Uh, today I'll show the printed circuit board that I'm using for the keyboard. So this was my original attempt at a keyboard and you can see it's it's fairly messy. Mechanically it works great. Uh, the electrics of it have turned out to be a bit of a problem. I'll just I'll move it over here and we can see it a little bit better. But the keyboard basically consists of the key shafts and there are 26 little micro switches inside there. Hopefully we can see those. And in this first version of the keyboard, I've hand wired all of these micro switches. You can see there's a common. Uh, there is one common rail across all of the switches. And then there's two wires coming out of each switch. So my first attempt was to have all the wiring coming out the top here through these, these holes and then run it in these little channels and have all the wires coming out the back of the keyboard. Uh, that turns out to be really, really difficult to do. And the problem isn't just assembling it, it's, it's what do you do if anything breaks or anything fails or you have to replace one of these switches. It's just horrendous to, to get in there and maintain it. So that was when I had the idea about using circuit boards for things. Just put that down. Um, these are basically all the different boards I made. Um, none of these boards have any actual circuitry on them. They're, they're plainly there for mechanical reasons and for uh, electrical wiring reasons. So there's no, no chips or, or um, passive components at all. It's just for wiring. Uh, I talked about the lamp board one previously. That's the lamp board there. You can sort of see it in there. And I just soldered all of the little lamp sockets directly to it. I also have a, a circuit board for the plug board here. Uh, that's for this one. And this will just have a row of headers along here and I will solder individual wires to each of these sockets uh, to make up the plug board. So that's a lot of wires, but it keeps everything individual. So if any of these sockets ever fail, you just need to undo the single socket and pull it out and it'll have its own connector on the board. And then there's a row of connectors to go to the rest of the machine. Um, the plug board is also where the power comes in, so that's the main power switch. And there are the sockets there for the, the power input. Um, being a non-electronic machine, it doesn't matter which way around you put the power. It's basically simple light bulbs, so polarity doesn't matter. But that's the lamp board, that's still to be done. What I've been working on recently is the improved keyboard. And you can see, we get one of the blank boards. This is one of the blank boards. Uh, like I say, there's no actual circuitry on it. It's all just for electrical wiring and mechanical. Uh, so what I have here are the 26 micro switches. They're just little standard tiny micro switches. And these are soldered onto the board. The, the bottom pin there is using a, a uh, PCB pin, which is, which is these little things. And they just solder through the board and the micro switch just solders onto those. And that gives you a good mechanical fitting there. And then there's just little individually bent little pieces of, of hookup wire. Um, I just use this, this style of wire. Uh, what does it say? It is 22AWG, 0.71mm wire. And I just bent that into the, the correct shape. It actually hooks over the little solder terminals. And there's just a little bit of heat shrink to hold it. And 
all of these switches are now nicely mechanically and electrically, electrically connected to the circuit board. Uh, the circuit board is a bit of a mess there. I was just cleaning off some of the flux. I haven't finished doing that yet. Normally I would clean these in isopropyl alcohol and then just warm soapy water to wash away the residue and then you just dry the boards really carefully. I just don't want to use water on this one because of all these switches. I don't want to get water into them. So this is the, the circuit board. I was looking at reusing, uh, remaking a lot of the parts and making up a second, a second keyboard rather than having to dismantle this one. Um, just because I'd quite like to keep this as, a, as one of the prototypes, but I don't actually have enough springs. Uh, I can easily remake all the shafts and reprint all the parts, but because I don't have the springs and it'll take a while to get them and I, I can't be bothered waiting, I'll strip this one down and reuse uh, most of the components in it. But you can see I've got the the uh, header pins there. One of the things I was waiting for was the the crimping tool uh, to be able to do all these these connections. So this isn't one of the proper Molex tools. Uh, those are really really good but really really expensive. So I think a proper Molex crimper runs about 300 to 500 New Zealand dollars. Um, these will work just as well. It's it's a little bit more fiddly, but once you get the hang of them, they, they work perfectly. And these are the little connectors I'm going to be using. I always refer to these as Molex connectors. Uh, I don't think that's quite the right technical term, but usually if you say that, everyone has some idea of what you're talking about. So these are just the connectors that come with the, the little plastic housings and then a bunch of terminals sort of on a reel like this and you, you just crimp the wires to them. So I'm going to go ahead and start dismantling the old keyboard and reuse the parts to reassemble this one and hopefully it'll work a lot better. The, the other good thing about doing it this way is I'm trying to make everything modular so this is the current keyboard. Hopefully this will work, but if it doesn't work, I can just redesign this and unplug it from the machine and plug in a new one. Uh, that's basically the idea. For the people who haven't seen it before, or the ones who can't remember how this works because it's been so long since I've worked on this thing, um, this is just a quick reminder how these key switches work. So. What I have here, it's going to be hard to see, but um, a little 3D printed sort of plastic collar thing. It's quite a tight push fit onto the aluminium shaft, so it doesn't, it doesn't flop around. It'll just turn nicely. And you can maybe just see, if I get the angle right, that the bottom of that sort of, if you think of that as a U shape, the bottom of that U oops, on one end has a little ramp on it so you can sort of see uh, just in there it kind of comes along and then there's a little bump on the end and that's what actually actuates the switch so the way these work is these will fit through these holes and you can see how this little U piece rubs on the side of the micro switch um, that does two things one it keeps the switch vertical because this shaft is held at the top, so this can't move at all. Uh, it can just move up and down. So that keeps the switch aligned. It also keeps the shaft from turning because it's rubbing against the sides of the, the switch, which means when you've got the keys on the top, the, the keys, the letters, aren't going to rotate. So you can always read them. But you can see how here's the little spring at the bottom, which just keeps it pushed up. If I push that down, you can see how the... Oh, well, you can't see because it's dark. Um, maybe if I turn it around. Put that back in the hole. Yeah, it's going to be tricky to see, but the roller on the micro switch rides up and down inside that little plastic piece. And you can see how when it gets to the end. Oops. The ramp causes the switch to actuate. 
Hopefully you can hear that. So that's basically how these switches work. Um, assembling them is a little bit of a pain. So what I actually do is if we put the switch through there again, you can see it only just pokes through the bottom there. Um, to make this a bit easier to assemble, what I do is I, I push all the switches down and then I hold them down with a little piece of rubber fuel hose. Um, and that kind of gets pushed on the end of the shaft and it just keeps them in place. And that just helps hold all the switches in place uh, while I sit the top down on top of it. Um, that's not going to be too hard to do. I just kind of have to carefully line everything up and then slowly drop the top down. But it's a hell of a lot easier to do that as it is now than when there were wires everywhere. So I'll go ahead and do that next. So you can see now I've got all the key shafts installed. And if we carefully look underneath, you can see how the shafts are being held down by the little rubber, the little pieces of rubber tubing. Um, these seem to have got a little bit fatter since the last time I used them, so they're only just holding on. So the next thing to do is place this top cover on. Uh, it has these little sort of towers sticking off it, and they press down on top of the micro switches to also help hold them in place. Uh, this should... I'm trying to get 26 shafts all lined up all at once is a little bit fiddly. Uh, you can see one's popped up because the the rubber's popped off the bottom and I've got that backwards which doesn't help. Um, this is why I need the little pieces of rubber in there because otherwise the, the key shafts just sort of flop around. So I'll see if I can do this. There we go. So that fits on top of there. It should fit flush with the, um, the things. So you can see the one that isn't held by the, the little piece of rubber has come loose at the bottom. And it's quite hard to now get that to poke through the hole again because it's in the middle row. So it's right in the middle of the keyboard. So I'm going to take this off and I'll, I'll do that off camera. So now this top cover's in place. All I have to do is get the the main cover on. Uh, this is quite thick, so this again is a little bit tricky. Uh, there is a, a sort of chamfer on the edge of the holes to hopefully line up the shafts, but even then it's a bit fiddly. As I say, you can imagine trying to do all this on the last one with wires hanging everywhere. It made it even, even more difficult. Uh, I have the top back on the keyboard now. It turns out it's not too bad to get all the shafts through because you can push this down from the top and then using something like a pair of tweezers or a, a little screwdriver you can poke down through the hole and you can manipulate the um, the shaft till it lines up with the hole and then they just sort of pop through. One of the issues I've had in the past is I 3D printed the little feet that go on the bottom of the, the key shafts and because this is just plastic, over time it deforms. So even if you print this to be a tight fit, eventually it'll, it'll just come loose. It sort of stretches. So to get around that for now, I just use little pieces of kept on tape over the end of the shaft. And then I press the feet down tight over that. And that gives me a nice tight fit. Eventually these will probably need to be glued. But I did forget one thing that... I forgot to do before I reassembled all of this, which is when you assemble it, you need to check that the micro switches, the little arms aren't bent. Oh, sorry, you can see there. So that, that little piece of, of steel there can bend. And these are set up so that the tolerances are quite tight, which means most of the keys work but you can see 
or you can hear rather, this one here isn't clicking. So it's easy to fix. Um, you can actually see it's moving a little bit there. That's expected. What I need to do is take this apart and bend that little arm to make sure it really does click. The other thing I could do is reprint these things with a slightly more aggressive ramp on them. But I do know from last time that bending the arm was, was basically enough to make it work. So I think I have a... I think there's about two of them that need adjusting. Yes, so that one's not clicking. Or that one. So that means taking this apart again, adjusting those micro switches and then reassembling it. And now that I've done it once, that shouldn't take too long to do. One of the issues with building something like this, which is effectively a prototype, you end up hitting unexpected problems. And I hit one small snag reinstalling the keyboard, and that is, it's not fitting. And the reason for that is because the the base of the keyboard here has these plinths which support this bottom board with all the switches on it, so that when you press down on the key, nothing flexes it. It's pushed up hard against here. I forgot to take into account the fact that I now have wires poking through there, uh, the pins there. So what I need to do is put in some little clearance channels in these just to clear those pins. Now, the old school way of doing that would be to, to mark up the bottom of those pins with some bluing or something like that, or put some tape on top of here and then press this down hard and you could see where the pins were touching it. It would leave little indentations. Um, of course, using modern techniques and technology I don't need to do that because I have my entire 3D model here and I can see exactly how everything fits together. So this is the whole machine um, and you can see here I can overlay the sketches you can see where the switches are and you can also see where those plinths are. So I'm just modifying that sketch and I will remodel that part and then I'll just reprint a new part with little clearance channels just where those pins need to sit. So that'll be the next job. That print takes quite a long time. That's a, that's a fairly big print. So it's a good thing I'm still working from home. I've got time to do that. I can set the print off overnight and leave it running during the day and I'm home. So I don't have to worry about anything going wrong. That will be the next job. Um, I'll probably finish this film now and show that next time.